something on the little more personal side, something I think about a lot, something I do for fun. I got a couple presses this last week. Yeah, I like that because I have been battling with one press. And presses. I want to make sure. Comic book presses. What is that for the new audience? There's a lot of new people. Some people may uh, not know what comic book press is. Let's, let's back it up a little bit. Okay, okay. A comic book press is a device like you see for shirts. And instead of pressing, let's say, some type of graphic on a shirt, you're pressing a comic to where it's going to present better from flaws of like non-color breaking, maybe some waviness, things of that sort. Yeah, sometimes people have comic books they want to fix and they think, hmm, I could just get an iron, right? Just iron out that comic. I've seen people try to do that. I've seen people actually find some success doing it. I don't recommend it, but the premise is the same. The difference is instead of just an iron, well, you have a t-shirt press or something alike, which is just a hot iron, but it clamps it shut. And then, yeah, if you work at it, you become an artist of this particular type of trade. Yeah, you could increase the value of your books by fixing them, potentially. Yeah, like you said, it is an art, and you only get better with practice. You will have, I promise you, fails. Dude, that's what I want to talk about today. Yeah, of course. Those, those are the funnest conversation, the fails. Okay? Well, because, dude, I got these presses. I was waiting a couple of weeks, but they both came in, and it started this conversation, and it was one of those mo moments where it's like we're working on the podcast, but we're having a conversation that I think we need to have on the podcast because this is real life. I had a decision to make. Do I get one press or do I get three? You know, what kind of press do I get? And we just started chatting. So first off, pressing. It is an art form. It is something that I have had some just the, the, the gamut, the, the span of the different feelings that I've experienced when trying to repair a book, bring it from low grade to higher grade, get it that one little grade bump. It's all over the place. It's like the... I, dude, I would compare the feeling to like finding out some terrible news, like the lows of that, to the uplifting feeling of finding $100 on the floor of like a park or something. I, I know what you're saying because the highs and lows are there. Like you will press a book. You're like, okay, I've had enough experience to where I'll look at a book and be like, you know what? I can probably get it to this point. And then you go through the steps and you know these steps. All right. And you try it out and then something happens. It's like, you know, the steps you've done them countless times, but still it's so easy to make one small mistake that no matter how much time you practice, even the most professionals, oh, I mean, it happens. It's a rush. It's usually when you're rushing or you're not paying attention or you're just, just something you did different. Okay. And I have done that where I've popped a staple on a book and that could happen regardless because you don't know how strong sometimes paper can be at that staple. It could just happen. You're trying to press it. You're trying to fix the creases. You're trying to make it look more presentable. You go all the way out of your way. What are some of these steps that you take prior to actually closing it in that press? Yeah, just kinda, yeah, it depends on the book and the year. But, you know, I, I will have between my press some other piece of paper. Sure. Before it meets. So it'll be the comic. It'll be a piece of paper of some kind. And then it'll be the press before I, I close it down. And so... I've had times where I've overheated it in my past and learning. And when you lift it up, the color has transferred to the paper. So maybe you don't damage the comic. You just kind of almost get a uh, ghost image, if you will, on this paper. Yeah, you're but, removing a little color. Yeah. Ink. But sometimes it'll grab your book and then it'll peel the color. And you're just like, you're kicking yourself because you get to this point where you're just like, oh man, I know I can make this book better. I can't stand where it's at right now. It's bugging me, all right? I need to make it better. I'll go make it better, all right? And then that place that you hated, you wish you could go back to now because you made it worse. I and now you're so like, well, dude. I'll do anything just to get back to that area that I hated so much to even look at. And it's just a terrible feeling that, like, you know, these books have been around so long, but you're the schmuck who just ruined it. You know, either you lifted all the color off of it or you... You know, put in a, a hard line across the whole book, which you could fix. There's some things you can fix, but if you don't know what you're doing, you can sometimes make it even worse. Yeah, something that I find myself, it's, I don't know, it happens more times than I would like, where it's like last minute, oh my goodness, that could have been bad. I had one of those moments recently. I was over on Instagram. Sometimes I go live on Instagram and I just start cleaning books. I don't, really do a whole lot of communicating with the community on there because it's more like, hey, you're a fly on the wall. 
I'm doing some stuff. It's my personal time. I like cleaning books and pressing them when I'm not working. I'm weird. I'm always doing comic stuff. But on Instagram at Comic Time 101, I'll go live so you can watch the process if you care to. And something that happens a lot is if you don't make sure that there's that, that cover's clean and the pages inside are clean, whatever pressing you do that closes all those pages together that you're trying to get that really flat surface, well, if there is anything there, like some dirt, a rock, a little piece of gum, just like grime, something you didn't notice, maybe a speck of who knows what right in the middle of the book. Yeah, you press it through every single page. And it's something that I swear if I have accidentally slash have actually caught that moment more than 30 times. Wait, wait. So you've actually pushed something that hard like through your book? Absolutely. So for me... And I, I'm going to say one of the biggest things you can do and best things you can do for your book before you press it is to make sure you flip through it. Oh, that's of course. Every page. You got to yeah, go through every, every page. Every page, make sure there's nothing in there. No dog ears already on a book. Dog ears. Explain that. Yeah. So just like a, a corner that's been bent over. So make sure those are straightened out. Yeah. Someone was reading it. They bent it over maybe a yeah. little bit and it could have been saved. You could have pressed it out. Whoops. You didn't check it. And now you just sealed that crease. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, and like you say, if there's something inside, you, you'll press it harder and it could tear or it could just put indents. I, I haven't had anything pushed through a book. I'll, I'll get like, you'll get the most minute flake of something and it looks so magnified when it comes out of the press, like this crater in your book. Now, you can fix those things, but again, it takes time and practice to learn that. We're not going to get into all those types of skills right now, but making sure your cover is completely spotless of anything is... It's important, man. It's really important because then you got, or if you don't do that, next thing you know, you got another 30 minutes of work on your hand. Have you ever had that moment where you're looking at the book after it's been a day, you let it cool. It's, it's fresh. You're like, oh my goodness, I did it. I got rid of that. I got rid of that. It's shiny. It's, oh my goodness. And then you look at the bottom or something and you're like, oh wait, what's this here? That wasn't there before. You caused a new problem, but you fix 99% of everything else. Yeah. And it's still the same process. You, you gotta go, go through the whole again. thing again anyway. <laughs> again. And then you hope that nothing else happens. And then you're like, then you go crazy in your mind. You're like, wait, was that there before? Comic fam, do you know what we're talking about? Please let us know in the comment section below. We gotta hear from you. But I wanna chat about some failures. I've had some. All right. I'll I'll share one. It was an eBay sale that I made, and I listed it as VF near mint. And I, I was going through it, and I realized that the back page, it had a little bit bit of something wrong i can't even remember it wasn't a crease or anything and it was a modern book it's actually it was witchblade number one and it was signed which is kind of a bummer too and because you know you can't these are they're not as easy to come by signed and getting them signed again isn't something we can do so i was trying to press it prior to it going out thinking oh i can fix it i maybe overgraded this by a point but eh, i'll just put it on the press i did it too hot as you said what's your experience with Heating up, maybe too high of heat, a modern comic book. Ugh. You Basically, your pages are all going to congeal together, especially when there's a lot of ink on those pages. Yep, um, and that's exactly what happened. I turned that comic book into cardboard. It was literally like just a, a hard sheet. You can hold it up stiff, and I every page was just agony, just, just tearing tearing every page just sticking together because modern books you can't press the same way as you press older books the paper is different and that's actually kind of part of this art is examples after examples that you have trial and error failures successes you learn from them and then over time years go by and you're like hey i'm kind of good at this now you know you have a lot less of those but they still happen what about you i know you have to have at least one yeah, I mean, I know I have a few, but um, I'll tell well, you about a bad this one. one. I want to because most he, recent. So I have a press. I have an M two ten, and this which, is a good point because uh, I mentioned at the very start of this. I bought more than one. This would be a good opportunity to explain why I would buy more than one instead of one big one. Because yes. you can get a big press that you can do more than one comic on, which is what you have, right? Yeah. So this is the first press I ever had. Okay, okay. or actually second press. My first press, I think I sold to Russ. My second press I got was an M two ten, which is a big press. You could press four books at one time. Which sounds great. You're going to speed through it. But when you get better, you realize that it's not so much the quantity of books. It's more individual because they're going to need something different, different temperatures, different pressing times, cooling times. So I'm more 
looking for now getting rid of that large press and working on maybe four smaller presses because I can have different heat times, cool down times, different pressing styles to that book for different defects. But at the time you thought, hey, one big iron, I can do more than one at once. Yeah, it makes sense, right? You know, you clamp it down once and you take care of all four. Yeah. But, but as you said, every book's different. You probably find yourself using it more sparingly than four at a time. Yeah, now it's, you know, that was back in my early mentality where it's like, I'm just going to panini this thing, you know? And it's just like, all right, there we go. Just smush it. Smush it to death. Okay, so tell me about a time where you smushed something to death. Uh, so I smushed, okay. So I had five Spidey 300s once, okay? I bought them all at a convention. Oh, gosh, I do not like where this yeah. story just turned. So I was like, great, I'm pressing it. I didn't make them be my first press. They're not, you know, like sometimes when you make pancakes, that first pancake's crap. It's a dud. All oh, right, okay. you're still figuring out the batter. You're putting like it's crap. So I let, I did a few books first to get okay. it out the way. I was like, I got my temperature right. Everything's pressing okay. Let me put in four at a time. I do not like where this story has gone, <laughs> dude. I was not expecting you to say, all right, so I got five Spider-Man 300s after I bought this press that heats up four comics at a time. Okay, okay. So you practiced a couple. How did the practice ones go? The practice ones went fine. But so I, was, I put four at a time because they, only, they all had the same issues. Everything was fine. They didn't have any major things. I just wanted to... Give them a little heat. Give them a little. You're you're feeling good. Yeah, I'm feeling yeah, good. I just did it. We got. I left it in there. Boom. And they're newer books. I don't usually deal with that newer book. Okay. And it's not like I'm talking modern, but it's new enough for me. I'm usually silver age, bronze sure. age, golden age type of stuff. And I let it sit for too long. Okay. okay. And I thought, oh, it's just going to be a long press. I'll turn it on, heat it, and cool it. And I think it was like half a day. I just came back to it. Did you forget? I just went and did my own thing. I shut it off. I turn it on. I shut it off, and let it just cool down. Oh, okay, yeah. Naturally, yeah. cool down. I did that fine. too. Let it, right. let it cool down on the iron because you have to, or else the pages will ripple. But apparently, the way I pressed it, I rubbed every back staple on the back cover because it's black. It pressed too hard, I believe, is what it was, or it rubbed somehow, and everyone had the exact same defect on the back staple of the cover. So all four copies. Eight staples, each had this like missing color right where the staple was in the back. And I was just like, yeah, like a removed me? cover. Yeah, color. removed the color from the pressure of being pushed into whatever was being pushed into at the time. Yeah, it sounds like too hot for too long yeah. and, and too much pressure. And all four? All four. All, all four. four. Just immediately downgraded. Yep. And I dropped the price at all. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. Okay, so what is that feeling? Like, let's try to explain what that feeling was like. You know, you're, you're, Thinking it's just the job is being handled. You probably spent a good amount of time. You know, you have the the start where you're getting stuff on the press. You're practicing. You're getting one after another. That's time. Twenty minutes goes by. Another twenty minutes goes by. Now you're ready for Spidey three hundred. You do all that work. You check all the pages. You let it sit there half the day, and then you find out that no, you actually shouldn't have done absolutely anything. Yeah, that's pretty much what exactly. That's, much, that's, that's the feeling <laughs> yeah, right there. You, you pretty much sums up pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, just that's why individual is probably better because you can focus more. You can just not be. I was kind of reckless, I believe, but also naive because I didn't press books at that time frame that often. So again, that is a quick learning experience because that's a big part of it. I mean, it's you learn from your mistakes. There's a reason people say that, and that's exactly what this situation was. And I will never forget that. And I will uh, <laughs> probably hopefully never do that again. There you go. Comic fam, do you have any pressing experience, you know, or any stories that you'd like to share? Let us know in the comment section below. I'm excited to have a press again. It's been a few months. I, I was using Russ's press because he wasn't using it at the shop for a really long time, but uh, he needed it back. So I picked up a few and I'm back at it and I've had a lot of success. I'm pretty stoked about it. And we are actually going to be sending out some books that I recently pressed in the mystery mail call. I just repressed my Fantastic 449. You've seen that book. Mm -hmm. It's a great comic book. I actually picked it up at Cal Comic Con last year, yep. and you're going to be heading there pretty soon. I also pressed Silver Surfer issue three that I picked up from New York, and that book's also going out in the mystery mail call in February. What did you think about the Wolverine <laughs> Lee In Hyuk Comic Tom 101 exclusive? That was a pretty cool one. I, I I was glad to hear that we chose Wolverine to go with. And when I saw that cover, I mean, I love the perspective. I love old man Wolverine and Wolverine. And it's just, uh, 
It's dope, man. It's a great action shot. I love it in the snow. It's just a good, powerful scene. I, I dig it, man. I'm really excited for this variant because last year, last month's Thor was a lot to live up to because the book was so awesome. But to have an eight dollar MSRP on a on a book, what's what? How many pages is that? It's like over fifty pages. I mean, it's a giant. It's a giant book that every member is going to be getting a copy of. And yeah, if you sign up, you're going to get your copy of Wolverine number one, but it's going to be an exclusive and it's going to be low print. So while supplies last, we sold out early last month, but current open enrollment is now. Link in the description to join. You help support the show, but we send you comic books every single month. 